Hello, my name is uh, David Garcia. I'm an associate professor at KDK, and I teach a master program called Architecture and Extreme Environments. And one uh, interesting aspect of um, our program, amongst many other things, is the use of time-based media, that is um, film-based um, uh, narrative, to communicate, especially the first part of the first semester. Um, one of the key uh, aspects of using this, uh, which is not necessarily the most usual of deliveries or uh, methods used in architecture, although I think it is a growing one, um, has uh, two intentions. One is a pedagogic uh, and the other one is a um, um, formalization intention. So within pedagogic, I think it is crucial that the students uh, of architecture as well, albeit as be, you know, normally having a tradition of two-dimensional representation and quite static, uh, the introduction of time uh, is uh, quite important within architectural design, generally speaking. Um, but at the same, uh, to add on to this, uh, the necessity to, to be able to communicate uh, a work uh, on a very different type of, of medium. Uh, not only the two-dimensional printed representation or even perhaps animation, but to be able to um, communicate the complexities and richness of a project um, to a greater public. So uh, as a pedagogic strategy, it is to allow them to uh, learn a new uh, tool that is um, from editing to storyboarding, to the use of uh, equipment and, and video and sound um, as an important aspect of their future uh, career to be able to communicate projects uh, through time-based media. And as a pedagogic strategy, the intention is to be able for them to uh, um, be able to collect the material, reflect upon the material, uh, make it concise uh, and clear for a greater uh, public. Um, we have often many collaborators in our uh, field work and if you see some of the films I reference and I link to this um, short talk, they are um, based on their experiences and prototypes, tests and collaborations on different places around the world. So for them it's a way of also reassessing and revisiting their work as it has to be compiled and has to be able to, in a concise manner, within the space of three minutes, communicate as clearly as possible, sometimes quite complex and broad aspects. Um, the complexity of the uh, area of exploration, uh, the results, sometimes incredibly technical, uh, the collaboration and the, uh, and the social um, uh, importance of their work as well. So it, it is an exercise of condensing, but also of allowing for clarity. Um, that allows them both to structure much of their work and revisit it, but also have a very different type of uh, intention and maybe even uh, recipient uh, in mind. Um, that implies, of course, um, often reflections on the spatial or temporal spatial aspects of the work as well. So how does this communicate through time if my work uh, lasts um, many weeks, or if it's something that happens incredibly fast. So obviously the idea of being able to control time um, and make it more elastic uh, becomes suddenly an important aspect of using film uh, and to allow them to understand that not only space is malleable, but also time is malleable when you play with uh, film-based uh, um, uh, media. Um, it's also been an interesting way to, for them to reflect on who is the listener, who is it that I need to communicate to. Very often, as I mentioned, their um, prototypes are very complex, but through um, film that allows you to very quickly contextualize and, and have a, a very um, tactile or as tactile as possible mediation of the context, um, at the same time, uh, you can use layers of information to be able to communicate as quickly and as clearly as possible. So that is not only the register of uh, the sound track or the uh, film uh, track, 
but also uh, text and um, and uh, in this case vector based information uh, normally added through systems like um, post production um, um, animated graphs um, scales. Um, now that has created sometimes a, in our, in our experience, uh, um, a system that might work, but also becomes a bit rigid. So we're always trying to welcome ways of challenging that. Perhaps that time narrative is not linear and it's not chronological, but you use, um, you break uh, the, the chronological timeline that you might have experienced in your project. So in a way they work very much as, as, as documentary um, um, in their strategy and in their aim, um, they're very restrained by the time frame that we give them, which is in the order of uh, maximum three minutes. Although we have had some examples that start to use speculation or even uh, uh, fiction as ways of telling their projects. And that's been quite interesting that um, in our intention to aim for clarity, some students are appropriating the medium to try and add other levels uh, to the narrative. Um, some of them have uh, tried to challenge as well the very um, static and controlled uh, use of the camera uh, to make it a much more almost um, vlog um, or diary approach. And that's one of the examples that I also uh, bring into the um, into the uh, into this presentation. And that's also been quite interesting. In other words, how um, they're trying to not be necessarily always very safe, but use different typologies or uh, versions of the um, of the palette that exists with regards to film media to try and also in incorporate that into otherwise uh, a quite ambitious, um, you know, three minute, um, very dense communication of, of specific facts. And I think that's also been very enriching. Um, overall, um, we, we, we really do think that it, it's a very powerful to, uh, uh, tool for, for architects. Um, um, it is an incredible aid that, um, that can be supplemented by other work or stand alone. Uh, it has absolutely worked as a way of communicating and disseminating the work that we do at the program um, because it generates this palette, this accumulated register of, uh, of all the students' uh, work uh, within a very uh, manageable uh, um, length. Um, so as a catalog, it also makes suddenly uh, sense. Um, and uh, obviously it has the potential of working in different ways in, uh, in how this is, com is communicated, both from the traditional uh, portables or even uh, screens on laptops all the way to exhibitions uh, and screenings uh, where suddenly it becomes part of a curated space. So suddenly those elements also become a, a spatial element on their own right. So um, the, the different lives that uh, and, and formalizations and communication aspects that um, the films that the students have been able to do has also been very interesting. And at that level, it's also been key to introduce um, and change the people that inform the students with some of the tools, um, whether it's been the storytelling, structuring the types of shots beforehand um, from the technical uh, aspects of filming and sound recording uh, um, per se. Um, if anything, uh, I wonder sometimes how that could be added and even challenged even more. Um, how the idea of um, uh, introducing or giving even more voice to the context that we visit uh, perhaps is something that we're aiming for. So there's the idea of collaboration or uncertainty, the, uh, the um, interview phase uh, or aspects um, that could be introduced in the film would also be uh, an important aspect to, or, or, or element to start to introduce more. Um, but that's about uh, it 
from here. I hope you see uh, some of the films I've selected and that the um, YouTube channel also becomes available with this presentation so many of the examples can also be um, revisited. Thank you very much.